stock market documentary channel presence. And 40 percent, and that would seem to me to be conservative. So we'll see in six months' time who is right. Well, Mr. Faber is back with us today, live today from Boston. Mark, welcome back to the program. Nice to have you on the halftime Thank report. Thank you. So, Thank you. stocks obviously fell uh, for a period of time until the, this, so, you know, February 11th bottom. They didn't fall quite as dramatically as, as you thought they would. Are you surprised that they managed to come back in the manner that they did from February 11th? Well, not really, because we have a lot of money printing all around the world, and uh, I think the markets are to a large extent manipulated by central banks, not necessarily only the Federal Reserve, but also the ECB and the Bank of Japan and so forth. So stocks are kept artificially high. But as an aside, I just wanted to mention that the Russell 2000, which had peaked out in uh, June 2015 at the February low, was down 27 percent. And IBB, the biotech uh, ETF, is even now down 30 percent from its peak. So actually, a lot of stocks have gone down substantially. But a few shares like Amazon have actually kept the indices at the relatively high level. And what also happened is that uh, gold shares, mining stocks started to rebound last December, and especially oil stocks after January, February of this year. And the oil stock increase also supported the market. So what's going to happen now? Where does the stock market go <laughs> yes. from here? With, with the backdrop well, now, now that we're six months from your last appearance on this program, okay, yes. you say cent, you know, central banks have sort of juiced the markets. We get it. Yes. Now we're starting to think about the fact that they're taking their foot uh, off the gas even further. They may hike. They, the Fed may hike in June. It may hike in July. Yes. What does that mean for the stock market? Well, I basically think that the market is fully valued if you look at price to sales, price to earnings, and so forth. And if you especially look at the global economy, which is deteriorating the outlook, it's not improving. And even you just talked about auto sales in the U.S. The U.S. economy is basically flat at best, and some sectors are actually declining. Uh, you look at retailing, it's not doing well, and it's not just because of Amazon, it's because of many other factors. The average American doesn't have much money left after paying for Obamacare and for rising rents and rising food prices and so forth and so on. So I think the global economy is not doing well. Earnings will be still under pressure. And what is interesting, if you look at the bond market, the bond market has been holding up reasonably steady since actually January, indicating that the bond market doesn't believe in a very strong economy. So what will happen now, I don't know for sure, but I think stocks, also given the candidates we have as, uh, for the next presidency, uh, given that, I think that stocks are still very vulnerable. To what kind of a pullback do you think? <clears throat> Well, as I said, and I've said this for a long time, May 24th, 2015, S&P 2134 was essentially an important high point. Can we exceed it somewhat? Possible with just a handful of stocks still being strong. The, I would rather focus on groups. I would look at gold shares. Some gold stocks, which we recommended, by the way, such as American Barrick, they were below $6 last September, October. They went to $19. Now they have to pull back. We need a correction to around, say, for Barrick, around $12, $13. But I think some of these stocks still have a huge upside potential, as well as the price of platinum, gold, silver. And I also believe that oil servicing stocks that became extremely depressed three, six months ago are now in a bottoming out phase and that thereafter uh, there will be some uh, decent price gains. What, what up upsets your view? If you say stocks are vulnerable uh, to a, a decent sized pullback, what, what causes you to be wrong? 
<clears throat> well, I, I think that if you print money, say if QE4 comes, or if helicopter money comes, which is not unlikely eventually, not maybe right away in an election year, but it's likely to happen in future. If these things happen in nominal terms, stocks could go up. But I'd just like to emphasize that, in my view, something very interesting is happening right now or, or, or over the last few months. The money printing now seems to be lifting the rate of price increases quite dramatically. You look at rents, you look at health insurance premiums, and so forth. So I think the cost of living is going up. So maybe stocks go up in nominal terms, but in real terms, they'll go down. And I would rather have a large position in precious metals and in selected commodities. I think you look at the price of soybeans, up 25% since March. Uh, a lot of these agricultural commodities are very attractive. And if I look around the world at uh, sectors, food stocks are performing well. And I think there will be a much more consolidation among food companies in emerging economies. So that's a sector I like. I like also commodity producers such as Vietnam and selected companies in Thailand. Thailand is essentially an agricultural country. Last question. What's the biggest <laughs> personal investment you have right now? Well, the biggest personal investments were in Vietnam, in a hotel and in uh, real estate and then the second biggest position is basically as a singular position yep. is in gold and in treasury bonds i have a lot of fixed interest securities and you know people say i'm always bearish but about 25 percent of my assets are in equities so i am actually quite uh, engaged in the equity markets and i have to say to my pleasure Surprisingly to me, my equity portfolios, all of them, are up between 8% this year and 13% in the first few months of this year because I had positions in the right stocks in Thailand mm. and in Vietnam. And I guess my, that was my last question, but I, I just thought of another one. <laughs> when you said treasuries, you, you, <laughs> you, you think treasuries are attractive? I mean, some people say that treasuries are more expensive than stocks. That is the view of some people, which may be true. But I look at treasuries as an alternative to cash. I prefer to own treasuries than cash. I look at treasuries compared to, say, German bonds, Japanese JGBs that have a negative yield. I'm Swiss. I look at 10 years yields on Swiss government bonds. Compared to these other government bonds around the world, U.S. Treasuries are very attractive, actually very attractive, unless you have a very bearish view about the U.S. dollar, which eventually the dollar will collapse one day, but maybe not against other currencies. I appreciate the time very much. Always enjoy uh, the back It's and my forth. pleasure. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Stock Market Documentary Channel presented.